at farmers markets, and this is already a successful program, as Ms. Daigle mentioned before with Riverdale Market. Not only do the SNAP participants benefit from the program, farmers benefit as well with increases in production and a more diversified offering. The city of Hyattsville is planning to provide matching funds for the 2015 Hyattsville Farmers Market. In a time where many suffer from chronic disease due in part to the lack of food security, it is essential to have programs like SNAP funded and in place to elevate our level of wellness and quality of life. As a nutrition educator, it is my belief that nutritious and quality food is medicine. I implore you to fund the FY 2016 SNAP to Health program and be part of the medicine that heals the Prince George's County residents. Thank you for your listening and thoughtful consideration. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Um, before we call the next person, uh, we have Director of our Homeland Security, Brian Moe here. Brian, raise your hand. Pastor Swine, right here. Swiring. You know what? Maybe we can bring the mic. You can bring the bra. Yeah. Barry. That's right. You can stay right there, Barry. She can stay right there. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And I apologize for not recognizing my own name. <laughs> That happens sometimes. My name is Pastor Gloria Jones Swearinga. I'm a resident of Fort Washington, Maryland. And I have found this evening extremely uplifting and educational. And I guess it boils down to what the county executive said in the beginning is that Prince George County has come a very long way. And I believe that because of the enthusiasm and creative energy that exists in this county. The best is yet to come. And since uh, we're surrounded by so much creative energy and so much enthusiastic creativity, I'm going to ask a question. Because for those of us who are print disabled, my passion is access uh, to do with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And I, I have a question to ask with regard to our libraries. I am dying for the day when the software that makes computers accessible is in my library, which is Akakik. I'm just wondering how far we've come, how many libraries can offer that, and when I can cart myself, you know, I, I know that some of the libraries have them, but Metro Access is extraordinarily expensive. And those of us who live on a ch fixed income, we don't have any difficulty being cheap. So <laughs> I, I'm interested in going to my own local library, which is right down the street from my house in Akakik. And that's my question for tonight. And I'll bet you somebody can tell me all about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. We will certainly find that out and, and let you know. Um, I think someone, Betty, we can direct someone around here that can tell us, um, and we will, we will do that. Thank you. Christine Ozy. Christine Ozy. Raymond Colbert. Good evening, everyone. I remember a certain commercial that says, I hate losing. Now, funny how this 2016 budget says the loss, and that particular commercial said we was going to gain jobs, gain on education, et cetera, et cetera. Now, 
since the education <coughs> is supposed to be so important, where is it in the budget? Can you say how much we have gained in education and jobs? Can you tell me the news media where our return on investment is with these slots? Can anyone say <coughs> how many jobs created? There's job fairs even in this um, college. Is there one, two extra employees coming to here, or is there 30? <clears throat> so I'm going to officially lay, lay out a gauntlet and say that they actually live up to what they say, or we get rid of them, and do just like any other thing, like a website or anything that's work, we get stuff that actually gets um, done. <clears throat> Every single time they, we have a budget, we should be debating whether or not we have better teachers, increased salaries, state-of-the-art equipment, what are we going to do with the surplus? I haven't seen yet, except for when they've been, been built, i.e. Merlin dead, as I like to call it. There's a job fair at Arundel Mills. There hasn't been one since. The only time there's been a teacher increase here is MGM. So I'm going to call out say that they either live up to what they say or we get rid of them for something that works. Now, it's supposedly they're supposed to be audited, so there should be either a line item in the budget or a note to the financial statements that says we should have so much more money because of the slots. So where's that line item? Either in state or um, federal, excuse me, state or local. Can you say who ran on the success of the slots, either state or local. These, where, where have the success, what model have we used in success um, for the slots? Was it Nevada, or are we saying with our votes that the only thing that we're really serious is that we don't want to go to Atlantic City or Las Vegas? Thank you. Saffle. Good evening, County Exec Baker. Um, good evening, my neighbors, and I want to thank everyone here for being compassionate and kind folks, because we love animals. Um, I have three concerns about animal control, though, in Prince George's County, particularly jobs, policies, and waste of resources. And they're really questions. My first question is, what happened to the initiative to, to convert all of the personal services contract positions that have been renewed year after year to county salary jobs so that people can legally Why is it tolerated that a county agency can keep people in a kind of indentured servitude while top management makes over $130,000 every year? What's been done to stop commercial trapping companies from bringing cats to Upper Marlboro to be destroyed? There is no nuisance wildlife control license for cats. But how many taxpayer dollars are subsidizing businesses that are neither county-based nor legal in their operations? And lastly, we heard for years that the shelter building in Forestville was an obstacle to community programs for animal care and control. In 2009, at a cost of around $15 million, the county opened a state-of-the-art kennel facility in Upper Marlboro. Why is it that five years later, there are still no community programs and the killing continues? Each year that $3 million is allocated to this program, it is being wasted. Thank you. Thank you. Rita Harper. Rita Harper, Barry Ab Abrams, okay. I'd just like to say thank you for staying upbeat and taking the county forward and being progressive and having an open mind about what the citizens bring to you. I just have two questions. Uh, what can residents do to change laws, rules, and regulations so food trucks and mobile businesses can operate full time? on public and private property Monday through Sunday. Second question is, is the Prince George's County Convention and uh, Visitors Bureau fully funded and which agency creates the strategic plan 
for travel and tourism. Oh. Barry, Barry, could you, Barry, could you stand for me? Do you know Nick Majette? Uh, I do know him, yes. Okay. Well, you were plant. <laughs> the reason I ask that is we just had a long debate about food trucks and coming to the county and, in fact, with the health department, which we regulate those food trucks. Uh, one of the things I will say this is that that was a robust discussion we had uh, just uh, this afternoon. Uh, because as you look at the county and its growth, especially around economic centers, Suitland being one, Largo, the new downtown Largo, which will be here in New Carrollton, we're going to see that, um, you know, food trucks, it, especially the way they've they've grown in D.C., are going to want to come here. So we're we're in in the midst of planning that um, uh, tourism. We certainly will look at that. But um, thank you for your comments, Donna Hobbs. My name is Donna Hobbs. I am proud to say I'm a foster parent of three young men with developmental disabilities and have been for 35 years. My gentlemen go to a um, New Horizons, which is a uh, agency that provides care for people with disabilities and jobs and other services. And I am asking, would you please help fund the minimum wage for us? Most of our employees, you could never believe the work that they do day in and day out to care for our individuals. They, they're very, very dedicated. And the majority of our people work two and three jobs to be able to live and, and, and survive in the county. So that's what I'm asking. Would you please fund the new minimum wage so that our employees can also enjoy some of the benefits of the county? And thank you for Chevrolet. Thank you for your second. Thank you. Our last speaker of the evening will be Sandra Pruitt. Sandy Pruitt here. Come on down, Sandy. Good evening, County Executive Baker and your budget team. My name is Sandy Pruitt. I'm the Executive Director of the People for Change Coalition and also a 24 resident of, of Prince George's County. Uh, the People for Change Coalition is a coalition of over 300 nonprofits and minority businesses. And I'm here this evening because we are launching a campaign for 10,000 summer youth jobs in Prince George's County. We're calling it Hands Up 10,000 Summer Jobs. We have formed a planning team of nonprofits and businesses who work directly with youth and understand the importance of exposing them to highly skilled jobs. We are calling on the county executive, who is now entering his second term, to make summer youth employment a top priority in the FY 2016 budget. According to the 2014 annual report on the summer youth program, the county placed 672 youth between the ages of 15 and 19 in summer jobs. That is not enough. We have 34,000 students in high school enrolled in our high schools here in Prince George's County. And we have seen increases in the public safety budget uh, over the past four years. So if crime is going down, why can't we reinvest some of those dollars back into our youth via summer jobs? And this investment would expose our youth to different careers would provide leadership and entrepreneurship skills. And we don't uh, call this exposure just placing them at a, an amusement park or at a fast food restaurant. We need to allow our youth to shadow entrepreneurs, engage in technology, health, criminal justice, construction, and real estate professions. And according to a, a recent article uh, in the Baltimore Sun, uh, written by the president of Morgan State University, uh, what he stated was, we are seeing a widening gap of students who are likely to obtain a four-year degree by age 25. And as the number of students on free and reduced lunch uh, in, across the state of Maryland is increasing, this is directly tied to low-income and educational attainment, 
which impacts the majority of our black students. We cannot wait for this gap to widen. We must take steps now to not only highlight our success in some of the graduation rates, but we must also take advantage of the summertime to develop our youth. We look forward to meeting with the county executive to present our proposal for a summer youth development program for the county FY2016 budget. And we also invite everyone here. We're hosting a town hall on February the 10th uh, to engage parents, students, businesses, and nonprofits in the importance of the Summer Youth Program and to learn more about our campaign. Hands up, 10,000 Summer Youth Jobs. Thank you. Thank you very much for everyone for coming out. That is our last uh, speaker. Thank you, Sandy. And uh, certainly we'll bring that up. Barry Stanton was listening with, uh, with uh, open ears about that we are creating jobs. Our next public hearing on the budget will be on February 12th. That's wow. the president's birthday. Um, at 7 p.m. in Laurel. Do we know where in Laurel? High school. Laurel, Laurel High School. So if you uh, did not get a chance to speak tonight, we certainly will see you there. And please be safe going home. Thank you for coming out. <laughs>